Uh, good afternoon. I'm Catherine Keeler, a resident here at Cathedral Village. I'm glad you're taking time to look at this interview. I'm interviewing Wadi Pickett, who celebrated her 100th birthday in September of 2015. That's a long time, and we're going to hear some things about her life, where she started out, and how she got to here at Cathedral Village. Okay, Wadi will be on in a minute. Good afternoon, Maudie. Hi. Thank you for taking time to do this interview. As I said, 100 years is a long time, and I'm sure there's lots of interesting things you have to say about what's going on in your first 100. So let me begin by asking you to say a little bit about where you started out your life, like as an early person, because I know it was not here on the East Coast. So where were you born, and what, what were your early years like? I was born in Risley, Oregon, which is no longer even there. The courthouse burned down and the, everybody moved away. Uh, but I and, and then my parents moved to Portland, Oregon shortly because my dad was a blacksmith and it was wartime and he worked in the ship in the shipping uh, oh. as a blacksmith. And uh, how long were you in Portland? just until I was three. Oh. When I was three, my dad took us to Southern Idaho. And uh, I don't remember a thing about that, that first three years, except I've been told that the apartment building that we lived in had a huge uh, fire, fire escape ladders on the outside. Yes. And that one time they found me halfway up that ladder. <gasps> And it seems like I remember it, but I don't, I'm not sure I do. I think maybe I just was told about it. So then we moved to Idaho, and I, the thing I remember about the move was that Minidoka was the closest railway station to Rupert, and uh, it was about 11 miles, and my dad picked us up in a horse and buggy, and it was snowing. And there was a, a old woolen lap rope, and I got down under that to get out of the snow, and there was a hole in it, and snowflakes came oh. in on me anyway, or I wouldn't remember that trip. Oh. <laughs> and why did you move? Why did we move? Yes. Well, I, I think my dad was quite an adventurous person. He, he didn't get really disenchanted with what he was doing but he just got extremely interested in something else. And he wanted to leave Portland, didn't like city life. I see. And so we went to Rupert, which was a little farming community. And for a while he had a blacksmith shop there. Mm -hmm. But then he, that of course got to be kind of out of date. So he farmed for a couple of years. That's when I started to school. I see. We lived. We, I was an only child. I was just about to ask about that because yeah, I didn't hear you mention anyone child. else. So it's just and, Ma, Pa, and you. Yes. And uh, the kids used to go by my place going to school, and I would follow them to school. And the teacher would let me stay. And she finally asked my mother if I could start. So I was first grade when I was five years old. One room school, I'll bet. One room school. And then later, I taught in that one-room school. The first year I taught, oh, that's was kind of interesting. <laughs> what kind of education did you have for teaching? I, I assume you graduated from high school nearby. Oh yes, I graduated from high school, and then I went. To, I went a year to Southern Idaho University. I see. And almost flunked out. I was oh. just 16 when school started, and that was the heyday of. Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. Oh, wow. And I couldn't be bothered with classes if there was a movie. <laughs> oh, I see. I didn't flunk, but I almost did. And uh, so the next year I went to a, to a normal school and graduated from the normal school. And that was considered teacher preparation? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, tell me about it your It was very good preparation. Graduates of Albion Normal 
could get schools any place in the United States. Oh, they had nice. a really good reputation. So did you only consider teaching or did you have other options? From the time I was five years old, I was going to be a teacher. Oh, and I nice. never altered one iota. So, well, so tell me about it. Did you like it and how long did you do it? Oh, I loved teaching. I had the reputation, my principals would say, every year was my best year. They, oh. I would say, that's the best class I ever had. That's nice. And uh, What level were you teaching? Well, I taught everything from third through sixth. Wow. And mostly sixth grade, though. The last probably 15 or 16 years were in sixth grade, and I loved it. I, I really liked it. People would say, sixth graders are getting kind of hard to handle. And I, I said, no, they're not. They're just old enough to realize things, how things really are. Oh. You don't have to be up for them if you have a bad day. You, you can enjoy yourself. <laughs> and, and, and yet, if you, you know, things like if they were having problems, you could just be very frank with them. Oh, that's nice. Rather than taking care of them as a younger oh, child. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, how long did you teach? 30 years, 34 years. Wow. I taught 14 years in Idaho uh -huh. before we moved to Washington. And then I taught 20 more. Wow. And who's the we that went to Washington? Your family or? My, oh, yes. We moved to Washington in 1955. Uh -huh. I was 40 years old. And, uh, you were married by then? Oh, yeah, oh yes, I was married when I was 21. I see. To the boy next door? Oh, practically. Yeah. The two little towns, Rupert and Burley, were on opposite sides of the river. And uh, he, he went to Burley and I went to Rupert. And I got acquainted him with him going to the outdoor dance, dance, whatever it was, outdoor pavilion mm -hmm. and uh, he loved to dance and I loved to dance and that was it. So you met on the dance floor, huh? Oh yes. He was, I watched him, I watched him dancing and I'd think, oh, I wish he'd dance with me. Oh, and he <laughs> and did. And he huh? finally did. <laughs> um, and I know you have at least one child because I've seen him here. I have two, I had two. My daughter died about eight years ago. Oh, that's too bad. Longer than that, because she, that's the reason I moved here. I see. She had died, and, uh, and Curtis, my son, said, you've lived on the West Coast with Tricia and her family all this time, and it's my family's turn. So he thought his kids should have a grandmother for a few years. So you spent your life with your own family in Washington. Yes. And where were you in Washington? Uh, well, I lived, Pat and I lived in Moses Lake, which is a little town in the center of the state. Uh -huh. There is a nice lake there, mm -hmm. but it, but Moses Lake was desert. Oh. The, the whole area was desert. We When we moved there, they had just put in Grand Coulee Dam. Oh, really? So you remember that? Oh, yes. Uh, not when the dam was actually being built, but but we we uh, we knew about it when we when we moved there. Grand Coulee Dam had been finished, and they were doing a farm in a day. Huh. They they drew lots for the, for some veterans. Oh, interesting! And gave one veteran a farm, and built a house and a barn and outbuildings in a day, and this veteran won it. Wow. And that had just happened when we moved there. And you're talking about, I don't know American history enough to know exactly when you're talking about, year-wise. What, what year was it, or around? That was in 1955. After the Second World War. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And, uh, and, and since then, of course, because of Grand Coulee Dam, the whole, I said the whole center of the state was desert. Uh -huh. When they put the dam in, it's now a fertile farming area. I think of the apples old, coming from up it's, there. It's, it's, yes, oh yes. Wenatchee is the apple capital of the world, and Spokane's the Lilac Blossom Festival oh. capital of the world, and it's it's a, it's a wonderful area. Oh, it sounds nice. Yes. It's not very well known to me, of course. I'm an East Coast person, no, but it sounds no. lovely. People, people, it's, it's amazing how little we do learn 
about other areas in which we do not live. That's exactly because right. the East Coast was that much of a mystery to me. Yes. So did you have any, you just mentioned that your son wanted you to come here so that he could be closer to you and you could be closer to his children. Did you have any reservations about moving across the country at your age? No, I really didn't. I think you, you later have an interest in philosophy. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that my philosophy is, if I decide to do something, then I'm going to make the best of it. I'm not going to blame anybody else or... Or cry in your soup about it. No, I'm not going to. That's right. I'm just going to make the best of it. And I was very happy in the retirement home that I was living in. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful establishment, much like this. Mm -hmm. The staff was amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and I was so comfortable with everybody. But Kurt, when I... When, when Curtis, I came out here several years at Thanksgiving time, and the last time I came, we Curtis brought me and we visited several places, about four or five, and uh, and we went to we came to Cathedral Village first, and then after we'd been to the others, we came back to Cathedral Village, mm -hmm. and when I went home, like I say, my daughter had died. Mm -hmm. I'd given up my car because I didn't go any place except to her house. So I, I, I was home about three days, and I called Curtis and said, I'm coming, oh. reserve a room. Oh, wow. So and I had been here three days until I was glad I'd done it. Isn't, that's amazing. I think that's just a remarkable story. Um, what did you what what did you impress you about Cathedral Village that made you want to come here? Well, it was beautiful and and the friendliness. And, and you knew no one. There right? just was a good atmosphere. I knew nobody. Wow. Uh, but there there there's an atmosphere, I think, that is not in the other places. Oh, that's nice to hear. I share that view. I mean, I haven't lived in any other place, but uh, I think it's an uh, unusual atmosphere. It is. It really is. And uh, and I and the first, I think, the first person who invited me to dinner, mm -hmm. I can't think of her name now. She has since passed away. But but that that was it. You know, from then on, everybody was nice. Everybody was friendly. And you made friends easily. I made friends easily. And how long ago was it that you came here? It will be nine years in March. And, so, and you love it. That's very nice to hear. So what did you get involved in? Other than, I know you made friends, but what kinds of activities here at Cathedral Village? Well, I, has, I wasn't here but a week until Joe Wiederman recruited me for the store. Oh, nice. And I had worked in the store in Cathedral, in Medicine House, too. I see. So, uh, and and I, you know, she really needed help, and she needed help she could depend on. Yeah. And uh, so I kind of got to be her right arm. Oh, that's nice. And, and so I was really interested in it. Good. What else? Well, did you join the bridge group? Or? Oh, yeah. I, well, there wasn't, there weren't groups. There were just people who invited people to play bridge. No, it was a little while before I played bridge. I had been playing some at uh, Madison House, but not regularly. But it wasn't long here that I had a group on Monday night and a group on Tuesday night. And, wow. You know, got to be pretty, pretty steady bridge in the evenings. I know you go to the gym because I see you in the gym, so yes. that's on your schedule. I try to go. I try to go at least three times, and many times I go four times. That's wonderful. And I'm only there. Well, I'm ten minutes on the treadmill. Two, new step and fifteen on the treadmill. Oh, that's for twenty-five minutes. That's pretty good. There are most most people and aren't I'm in really there much proud longer. I myself when I go a half mile in fifteen minutes. That's very good. That's very good. Um, what else around here do you do? Anything? Well, I, you know, I would like to go to the greenhouse. Oh, yes. But I don't get there very often. 
but I enjoy that. That's good. I haven't I haven't been ambitious enough to want to have a field a, a garden in Potter's Field. Oh, I know it's a lot but, of work. Uh, but I have. I have some plants sitting outside in pots all the time. Mm -hmm. I've raised tomatoes every year. Oh, that's nice. And I usually want a rose bush. Oh, oh good. <laughs> you know what else I wanted to ask you, Maudie? Since you lived a nice long period of time, thinking back on, in the quarters of your life, what memory, specific memory do you have about being a young person like until you're up to 25? What what seems significant about that part of your life? Well, I lived to dance. I lived, we went to dances all the time. That was your social life, huh? Yes. Yes. I didn't, um, I wasn't a sports person, not even a sports fan, actually. Oh. But I was always busy. I don't know what I did. Well, you did the activities that we all do to keep us I busy guess, every day. I guess. How about the next quarter, like from 25 to like middle age, 50? Well, that was that was a pretty significant part of my life, wouldn't it have been? Because I was married when I was 21. Mm -hmm. So that's when I had my family. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the war? And was teaching, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I had, you know, I had lived in town all my life, but when Pat, now Pat was a farmer. I see. He loved farming, and he was good at it. And uh, <laughs> when we first moved to the, my, when the war broke out, I can remember Pearl Harbor. I was at home, the wind was blowing, it was a cold day, I had my two little kids. I, we were on the Davenport looking out the window and the radio came on and announced Pearl Harbor. And my dad said, they are not taking unhappy about it. I was, I was doing what I wanted to do. Well, it was happy, a pleasant time of your life, huh? That's right. Yeah. Then we did, there, there wasn't water in the house, and my, we, my dad was really, he, well, he was taking care of me. And so he, we just, he decided to put in a well. Oh. And we had the water level, the water table was pretty low. We didn't have any idea where to drill for water. And he got, you, you read about dowsers, people who take the sticks out and go, my dad found a dowser, <laughs> so when they put the well in, it was about 200 feet from the house. Oh, wow. So we had to pipe the water in. For a while, we just had cold water in the house. But that was much better. Before that, we had to, we had a cistern. We had to haul water from oh, town yes. and put it in the cistern and then yes. pump it back out. Yeah. So I lived that way for how many years? Let's see, I don't know, I don't remember that year. We were there for several years. My kids started to school from there, and I had had to quit teaching when I had my family, and I had my, that we were living there when my brother-in-law was superintendent of schools, and came out and he had had a fourth grade teacher leave and go to the war. Oh. So they, he needed me to teach. Well, I had Trisha. Curtis was in school, but I had Trisha at home. But he said, "There's a nursing, there's a nursery school in the basement of the school where you'll be oh. teaching. She can go there." So I started back teaching. Hmm. The next year, the nursery school closed, and so I wasn't going to teach. I wasn't going to sign a contract. And about three weeks before school started, he said, "We, ha I have to have a teacher, and hmm. we'll let Trisha start school if you will wow. teach." She was not six until September, and or till November, and school started in September, but they let her start, so she started school when she was five. It sounds like you were at the right place at the right time for your teaching career. Yes. That's yes. very nice. And in fact, being on the farm did keep your husband out of the military, right? It did. Yes. It did. So. 
Now, what about the period of her life from like 50 to 75 when you're beginning to think of old age? Anything significant in that period? Well, of time? I think that probably was the least stressful period. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids were getting old enough, and right. and uh, and we were financially a little more secure, and I think probably that was the least stressful. We were both well. Mm -hmm. And you still are? I am, yes. 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 So. And what, when you thought of old age, uh, what did you think, and is it like you expected it to be? I don't think I ever gave it a thought. Perhaps I, I that's never better. worried about it, I know that. Right. Yeah. No, I never. It's been a good time for, for you it's in your been, life. I've, I've been very happy in my old age. That's very good. Now, here's, here's a question I always like to ask older people. To what do you owe your longevity? I mean, 100 years is a long time, and most people don't reach that age. What do you attribute that to? Just the fact that my parents, I guess, my just genes, because I haven't I haven't ever been a diet person mm -hmm. or a health person. I never worry about it. Mm -hmm. When they when they start the fads about you mustn't eat bacon, you mustn't eat yes. eggs. I eat what I want to when I want to. And you always have. I always have. Well, that served you very well. Um, is there anything else that, about sort of like a philosophy of life that you? reflect on that you'd like to tell the audience here at Cathedral Village who will be looking at this interview? Well, j just the fact, like I said, if I decide to do something, then I live with it. And, and I, I really do think if, if people would just, if there's something bothering you and you can do something about it, do it. If you can't do anything about it, then you live with it. I, 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 I do that myself. And I, people can sit and stew and worry oh, yes. over the most insignificant oh, things. Yes. Sounds like a very nice philosophy and, a, and one that would last a long time if you practiced You'd last a long time if you practiced it. Yes. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure You're having welcome. you here. And um, you can look at yourself on Channel 97 one of these days. Okay. Thank you, Marty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking time to watch this interview with Maudie. It's been a pleasure conducting it. I think she did a great job and maybe I'll be interviewing a lot of you on your 100th birthday. Thanks. <laughs>